All right. So again, Carrie, I said it's just you, me, and today in statistics because all the boys are playing hooky. I know where you are. Okay, we're going to record this for you guys so that you can see the solutions to the numbers 12 through 20. So number 12 in the textbook says, suppose you really want the Tiger Woods picture. How many boxes of cereal do you need to buy to be pretty sure of getting at least one? Your simulation should at least have 10 runs. Okay, let's look at what the college response is. Number 12, answers will of course vary. A component <clears throat> is the simulation of the picture in one box of cereal. So again, notice right here, Carrie, it talks about what a component is, even though it wasn't asked for it. Okay, One possible way to model this component is to generate random digits 0 through 9, let 0 and 1 represent a Tiger Woods, 2 through 4 represent Lance Armstrong, and 5 through 9 represent Serena Williams. In class, we did Mario Luigi Peach. Each trial will consist of generating random numbers until a 0 or a 1 is generated. The way that you're looking at this right now in the solutions manual is the absolute number five way that you'd want to write this in an AP test. Okay? The response variable will be the number of digits generated until the first zero or one. So again, we're looking for a response variable. The total number of digits generated divided by the total number of trials will be the simulated average number of boxes required to get a Tiger Woods picture. According to the simulation that was done by the person who did the solutions manual, we got to be careful about that, okay? According to the simulation done by the person who did the solutions manual, in order to be reasonably assured of getting a Tiger Woods picture, expect to buy about five boxes. Different simulations are different. What did you get? There you go. So, because your simulation is different. And the really cool thing about simulations is if you bring your simulation together along with his simulation, the data gets even better. Now, because this guy is a professional statistician, there's a very good chance he ran 10,000 trials in some kind of statistical software. So, five is probably the true theoretical amount that we'd want to do. Okay, does that make sense? Number 14, lucky guessing. A friend of yours who took the same multiple choice quiz got all six questions right, but now claims to have guessed blindly on every question. If each question offered four possible answers, do you believe her? Explain basing your arguments on a simulation involving at least ten runs. Okay, college textbook answer. Answers will vary. A component is one multiple choice question, so he gets right into it. He talks about what a component is. One possible way to model this component is to generate digits 0 through 9. Let the digit 0 represent a correct answer, and let digits 1, 2, and 3 represent an incorrect answer. Ignore digits 4 through 9. If I didn't teach you that before, now you know. You can actually select digits 0 through 9, and if you don't have any use for certain digits, you can completely ignore them. Each trial will consist of six usable random digits. The response variable is whether or not all six simulated questions are answered correctly. The total number of successes divided by the total number of trials will be the simulated probability of getting all six questions right. Few simulations will have any trials getting all six correct, leading us to conclude that the probability of all getting all six questions correct is very small. Now this one, Carrie, you can actually calculate the theoretical probability, the true probability. And it turns out to be 0 .0024, 0 .00024, which is very small. So it's very unlikely that your friend is telling the truth. She may think that she answered blindly, but there's a good chance that she actually did learn something, which is what every teacher shoots for. Number 16. <clears throat> random is as random does. The Beat the Lottery website discussed in Exercise 15 suggests that because lottery numbers are random, it's better to select your bet randomly. For the same simple lottery ex in Exercise 15, random values from 0 to 9, generate each bet by choosing a separate random value between 0 and 9. Play many games. What proportion of the time do you win? So we do have to go back and look at 15 real quick here. 
in order to make this work. This is going to happen, by the way, as we go through the course. I'm going to usually assign even number problems, but you have to hop back to an odd number problem in order to perform an even number one. So let's go back to 15. Beat the lottery. Many, state, many states run lotteries to raise money. A website advertises that it knows how to increase your chances of winning the lottery. They offer several systems and criticize others as foolish. One system is called Lucky Numbers. People who play the Lucky Numbers system just pick a lucky number to play, but maybe some numbers are luckier than others. Let's use a simulation to see how well this system works. To make the situation manageable, simulate a simple lottery in which a single digit from 0 to 9 is selected as the winning number. Pick a single value to bet, such as 1, and keep playing it over and over. You'll want to run at least 100 trials. If you can program the simulations on a computer or programmable calculator, run several hundred. Or generalize the questions to a lottery that chooses two or three digit numbers, for which you'll need thousands of trials. So that's where a computer becomes necessary. What proportion of the time do you expect to win? And B, would you expect better results if you picked a luckier number such as seven? Try it if you don't know and explain. So let's look at the explanation for number seven, uh, for number 15. A. Answers based on your simulation will vary, but you should win about 10% of the time. B. You should win at the same rate with any number. All numbers, therefore, are what? Same probability. Equally, yeah, yeah, same probability, which means that they're equally likely. That's a phrase that you definitely want to get familiar with, equally likely. Now let's go to random is as random does. Let's go back to that question. 16, random is as random does. It says, um, for the same simple lottery in 15, generate each bet by choosing a separate random value between 0 and 9, play many games, what proportion of the time do you win? So this one says just keep generating a simple random value. Just pick something at random. So it turns out that answers based on your simulation will vary, but you should also win about 10% of the time. Playing randomly selected lottery numbers offers no advantage to picking your own. The moral of the story is don't play the lottery. Another strategy for beating the lottery is the reverse of the system described in exercise 17. Simulate the simplified lottery described in exercise 15. Each time, bet the number that just turned up. The website suggests that this method should do worse. Does it? Play many games and see. 18. Answers based on your simulation will vary, but you should win about 10% of the time. Playing lottery numbers that have won in recent lottery draws, drawers offer no advantage. Each new drawing is independent of recent drawings. See, but I said it gets worse. But the simulation would show that it wouldn't. Now, I don't have... Um, actually, let's do this real quick. Let's go to the Internet. Okay. And... I am going to generate digits 0 through 9 and actually I'd like to generate a lot of them how can I generate a lot of them numbers integer generator okay so generate let's generate 10,000 integers from 0 to 9 format should be in 10 columns. Get the numbers. Okay, so what we do... See, but rarely you get same numbers twice at the same time. Well, let's, let's run through this. Okay, so let's do a first trial. We're going to do a trial. We're just going to keep going until we, until we win. Okay, so let's think of Think of a number, close your eyes, and think of a number that you want to pick between 0 and 9. One. Okay? So, 1. There, we won. So that's the first trial. 
So we did it on the first one right there. So let's record this down. So here's what we do. Okay, trial one, it took one time to win. Now, think of another digit between zero and nine. Two. So now we pick up here. I'm gonna go down this column. So we failed, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen times it took to play until we won. So trial two, it took us fifteen times. Now think of another random digit to choose between zero and nine. Three. So I resume, I pick up here and I start here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Took us six times to play. And obviously we can't do all 10,000 trials, but now we'll pick up from three. What other digit do you want? Five. Five? Okay, so we pick up where we had six, and there it is. We won. Now we only did four trials, so this is going to be really, 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 really bad. But we won four times, uh, divided by the, let me go back real quick, I want to make sure that I answer this correctly. <clears throat> sure, we're not playing lottery numbers that have won, I'm going to go back up. Number 14, impossible models to generate. Total number of successes divided by the total number of trials. Okay, so what, we're, what we've done here is we've generated, we've won four times, but we've played 16, 22, 23 times. We've played 23 times altogether. And so the probability in this case for winning with four trials, which is painfully small, by the way, is 4 23rds, but uh, 4 23rds is about 20% of the time for this one. Now, as the number of trials increase, it's going to approach the theoretical 10%. Does that make sense? So that's for you guys watching the video so that you can know how you would generate that. Notice I went right to the website and used the random integer generator right then and there. Okay, number 20. Oop. We've got a system hang up. Yay. There we go. Number 20. Oh. Dear Lord, could you please help this to work? Why am I hanging up here? I've got too many applications open. That's the problem. Here we go. Still learning. As in exercise 19, assume that your chance of passing the driver's test is 34% the first time and 72% for subsequent retests. Estimate the percentage of those tested who still do not have a driver's license after two attempts. So we have to go back to 19. You're about to take a road test for your driver's license. You hear that only 34% of candidates pass the test the first time, but the percentage rises to 72% on subsequent retests. Estimate, estimate the average number of tests drivers take in order to get a license. Your simulation should at least use 20 runs. Okay, so let's look at the solution to number 19. 19. Answers will vary. A component is one driver's test, but this component will be modeled differently depending on whether or not it is the first test taken. One possible way to model this component is to generate pairs of random digits 00, 0 through 999. Let 0, 01 through 34 represent passing the first test, and 35 through 99 and including 00, 0 represent failing the first test. Any questions on the digit choice? Okay. Let 0, 1 through 72 represent passing a retest, and 73 through 99 and 0, 0 represent failing a retest. To simulate one trial, generate pairs of random numbers. So this time we're going to generate pairs until a pair is generated that represents passing a test. Now it could be passing on the first or passing on the second, but you're, we're going to generate now randomly ordered pairs. Okay, 
begin each trial using the first test representation and switch to the retest. So let's see how I would do that using my random number generator. What I would do is I would go from 00, zero to 99 and it would be in two columns. That would represent my ordered pair. Okay. Okay. So let's go back. Have I passed the test the first time? Yes. So this is a pass. So that's the first trial. Second trial, have I passed the test? No. no. But have I passed it here? Yes. Yes, so I've passed it here. So this ordered pair represents a pass. Now, pass? Yes. So yes. Pass? No. Pass? Yes. So this ordered pair represents a pass. How about here? Yes. How about here? Yes. Uh, for 42? That's the first time you're taking the test. Yeah. What's the percentage of passing the test the first time? All 34. Right. So while this one fails, this one still succeeds, right? How about here? No. Here? Yes. So, so far, we're doing pretty good. Next one, yeah? Yes. Next no. one, this is a no, but this is a yes. This is a, is that a no or a yes? If it's Okay, that's a yes. How about this one? 66, 36. Yes. yes. So, so far we're doing pretty good. But this is how we run through it. Let's see if we can actually find it. Here's a, I think, eh, no, this ordered pair. That's a, that's one, isn't it? Okay. How about this one? Is this a failure for both tests? So we find we do have failures in there. And we have 10,000 of them. So if we're going to do this correctly, we'd have to march through. We probably need a Java program to check them all and then tell me what the percentage is, which is possible by the way. This is where this is where programming becomes very helpful because now if you were an independent statistician and if you didn't have software to check it for you, you'd have to program software by yourself. So this is where Java would come in handy. You could actually put these in a text file, read them from a text file, and then do calculations on them to say, okay, if the first test is less than this, I pass. But if not, check the second test. If it's less than this, I still pass. Otherwise, I failed. And then you just count how many times you pass versus how many times you failed versus how many, how many runs you did altogether, and then you can calculate the probability from there. So that's where becoming an independent learner is very important and where programming can actually be used. Okay, so the response variable is the number of simulated tests required to achieve the first passing test. The total number of simulated tests taken divided by the total number of trials is the simulated average number of tests required to pass. According to the simulation, the number of tests, driving tests required to pass is expected to be about 1.9. Now let's go back to question 20 real quick. Question 20 is asking, as in exercise 19, assume that your chance of passing the driver's test is 34% the first time and 72% for subsequent tests. Estimate the percentage of those tested who, will, who still do not have a driver's license after two attempts. So now we're looking for the percentage of those who failed both times. But to do this, we need another simulation. So, answers will vary. A component is one driver's test, but this component will be modeled differently. Depending on whether or not it is the first test taken, one possible way to model this component would be to generate pairs of random digits, 0, 0 through 99. Let 1 through 34 represent passing the first test, and 35 through 99 and 0, 0 represent failing the first test. Let 0, 1 through 72 represent passing a retest, and 73 through 99 and 0, 0 represent failing a retest. To simulate one trial, generate pairs of random numbers until a pair is generated that represents passing a test. Begin each trial using the first test representation and switch to the retest representation if failure is indicated on the first. The response variable is whether or not the driver's test is passed within two attempts. 
The total number of simulated failed tests divided by the total number of trials is the simulated percentage of those tested who do not have a driver's license after two attempts. According to the simulation, the percentage of those tested that still do not pass within two tests is expected to be about 17%. And that was number 20. Okay? So, it is Wednesday. It is Wednesday. Um, we're going to do an in-class assignment. And the in-class assignment that we're going to do today is Chapter 11, Numbers 21, 23, and 25.